Hello and welcome to Tel Jezreel. This is a beautiful archaeological site within the massive Jezreel Valley. We're located currently on the east side of this lush green Tel. And I want to talk to you about some fascinating discoveries that have been made at the site over the past decade. Now in 2012, Dr. Norma Franklin of Haifa University led the newly designated Jezreel expedition and they undertook several excavations at the site and made some stunning discoveries. Before we get to the details of that, I want to bring you up to speed with a certain passage in the Bible relating to King Ahab. The famous King Ahab and his wife Jezebel, some would say infamous king and queen, their rule dates to the early to mid 9th century BCE over the northern kingdom of Israel. And Ahab's reign was a roller coaster one for the northern kingdom. Ahab himself is actually mentioned on several inscriptions that have been found at various archaeological sites. And you can read about those inscriptions on our website. Even his wife Jezebel is most likely referenced on a seal inscription that says belonging to Jezebel. There's some debate about uh, its provenance and that type of thing, but you can read more about that. Very uh, tantalizing connection with the Queen Jezebel on our website. Now, during Ahab's life, there was a particularly sanguine episode that took place. Uh, you'll be possibly familiar with the account contained in 1 Kings 21 about a neighboring vineyard to Ahab's house that Ahab was coveting. This is Naboth's vineyard, or Navot in Hebrew. We'll go with the English pronunciation for this episode. But I want to start reading to you from 1 Kings 21. We read, quote, And it came to pass that after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spoke unto Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give you for it a better vineyard than it, or if it seem good to you, I will give you the worth of it in money. And this account continues to relate that Naboth refused this offer uh, under certain legalistic grounds. He had every right to do so. He refused uh, to turn his vineyard over to the neighboring King Ahab. Now this mention of Ahab's house is not necessarily a palace. It's a hechal, or which could be a military type of complex. And at the top of this tell here, uh, behind me, uh, a military complex, a hechal, was discovered uh, dating to this time period, to the 9th century BCE. And over the past decade of excavations here by the Jezreel uh, expedition, they found this amazing wine press area before me. An intriguing series of cutouts. This kind of bedrock series of cutouts is extremely hard to date, obviously. We have regular cleanings of such sites that go on, but basically the archaeologists were able to determine from plaster samples that the latest period of use of this site was the first century BCE to first century CE. Now they were able to deduce that it most likely began in or around the 9th century BCE. And that's largely based on the lay of this type of winery and comparing it to other similar wineries. It's also because there is no beam press found here or, or screw press, which are typical for later periods. So this kind of a site fits well uh, with the early period of use, the 9th century period of use here at Jezreel. And another interesting fact that they found out about this general area in cooperation with the nearby Jewish kibbutz is that this side of the tell, the eastern side of the tell that this is located on, actually the soil of it is more conducive to grape growing, whereas the opposite side of the tell is more conducive to olive growing. So it would make sense that this was a vineyard area in conjunction with this wine press area during the 9th century BCE. Now continuing a little bit further with this story, Ahab, when he was refused this vineyard, he returned back to his building up on top of the hill and he, he was down, he was depressed and Jezebel said, don't worry about it, 
I'll take care of the matter. She essentially set up this kangaroo court, charged Naboth with false crimes, and had him put to death. And ultimately, as a result of this, the prophet Elijah came and met with King Ahab and condemned him and his descendants to a grisly end, that God's condemnation would come down upon the dynasty and his dynasty would end and ultimately go over to one of his captains. This situation of the wine press on the east side of the Tal actually matches perfectly with the biblical account, a later biblical record. And we can read about this in 2 Kings chapter 9. Now this is during the time of Ahab's son, Joram. Joram was wounded in battle with the Syrian king and he retired back to Jezreel to recover. And it makes sense in a military situation for him to retire to more of a military command post up on top of the Tell rather than necessarily just a palatial complex. So it would make sense that he was, uh, he was recovering at the top of this Tell. And 2 Kings 9 talks about how Jehu was anointed as the future king of Israel. And once Jehu was anointed and told that he needed to take out King Ahab's family to set himself up as the king of Israel, he himself came from the battle from the east to Jezreel to talk with Joram and ultimately to kill Joram. We read about this in verse 21, quote, And Joram said, Make ready. And they made ready his chariot. And Joram king of Israel and Ahaziah king of Judah went out each in his chariot and they went out to meet Jehu and they found him in the portion of Naboth the Jezreelite. So they had this meeting on the eastern part of the city, again fitting with this general area here. So the location fits pretty well with the biblical account of Naboth's vineyard, it fits as well as you can expect. And even though we cannot be sure that this absolutely was Naboth's vineyard. The evidence, as Brent Nagtigale writes in his article on the subject, the evidence points to uh, this being Naboth's vineyard and is as good as archaeology can get. So this site here at Tel Jezreel is a fascinating window, albeit a small window, but a fascinating one nevertheless, into this situation described in the first book of Kings, chapter 21.